Think about your guests when they're there and what kind of experience you want them to have. We want to think of them at their lifetime value rather than they're just coming for one or two nights or even a week. We want them to come back and again, and we want them to give good reviews and tell their friends because that is part of our marketing as well, is telling others to come and stay. So it's looking at the guest experience and what they want. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Conner. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Conner, your host, and boy, have we got a show for you today. You know, most of the time we talk here on the show about how to raise private money without asking for money and how to not even use traditional lending sources or institutional money. Well, today we're going to be talking about once you have raised some of that private money, then what can you do with that private money? Well, you know, there's all kinds of real estate asset classes and we've got a very, very niche class that we're going to talk about today as to how you can use that private money. Well, my guest today, she is the founder of what's called Direct Booking Success. Direct Booking Success is a podcast. It's also a summit and it also is a program. Well, her mission with this uh, business and with this education is to help vacation short-term rental property owners and managers increase your direct bookings with what she calls organic marketing. Now, she's also a property manager and an owner herself. She's been managing her own award-winning properties all the way back to 2013. Now, finding herself with a property in an oversaturated area was what initially led her down this, what she calls the direct booking path. Well, in addition to that, she's the host of the Direct Booking Success podcast, which is produced weekly with a mix of educational solo episodes and et cetera. She's an amazing person. I met her back just a few, uh, few months ago. She's the uh, founder of what's called the Annual Direct Booking Success Summit. This event is a free uh, marketing and hospitality educational online summit. In just a moment, you're going to meet my amazing guest today, Miss Jen Boyles, right after this. Well, Jen, welcome to Raising Private Money. How are you? Good. Thanks, Jake. Lo lovely to be here. Yes, it's great to have you. And we haven't talked hardly much at all here on Raising Private Money about short-term rentals and Airbnb and all that kind of stuff. So take us back to the beginning of what was it that actually got you uh, uh, interested in short-term rentals? And what's the beginning of your story? Well, sure. So 2013, I um, was renting out an apartment that we owned in France. I spent a lot of time in Europe. I'm now in Vancouver, Canada. Um, but we rented out, my then husband and I rented out an apartment on Airbnb. And it was amazing. The light bulbs went off and we thought, what a great way to make some money and use our investment property um, to help us do this. We still wanted to use it, but there was times when we weren't there. This was great. We used it on a couple of different properties that we owned. Um, but then what happened was we bought a five bed chalet in the Austrian Alps. It was a completely oversaturated market with short-term rentals, hotels, B&Bs, guest houses, you name it. Those buildings were there. And we, we bought with our heads or with our hearts, sorry, not our heads. That was the real big problem is that we bought it because it was a sound of music. It was perfect. We loved it. Um, and once we, but we thought, oh, we just had our blinders on and thought, we'll stick it on Airbnb and we'll make lots of money. Well, it didn't happen. We had a mortgage to pay. 
you know, it, it really was bad news. And it wasn't until I got a phone call from a previous guest with a previous owner um, who had booked with them and they wanted to come back and they wanted to book direct. And this is the first time I'd really heard that expression. Um, and the penny dropped for me that it was time to build our brand and to really go after our own direct bookings instead of relying on the likes of Airbnb, Booking.com, Expedia, all of these online travel agents. Instead of relying on them, we could make our own business. So that's sort of how I got started, Jay. Well, that's interesting. Uh, and, and here's why it's interesting. Your story is very, very similar to mine, except mine, of course, happened with trying to get funding for uh, my, my house deals. And my story relates to yours by the fact that it was a big problem and a big uh, challenge that I had that I had to overcome. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was cut off from the banks uh, from, from lending me money in the, in the midst of the financial global crisis back in 2009. So I had a choice and you had a choice when the challenge came along and that was, we could, you know, quit and put mm -hmm. our tail between our legs and go to the house, or we could find a different and even better way, um, you know, to do our business. So what I've learned and discovered over the years is the growth takes place in the Valley. So your Valley was, you got no business. <laughs> Yes. Well, that was it. Yeah. You got no there business. Was, and so yeah. now how are you going to get business? So I have got, well, I think I know what it means, but I'm not, I'm not in your industry uh, very much. Well, I am, I, I'm glad we're having this conversation because right now we're in the midst of an over a $100,000 renovation rehab on my grandparents' home that was built a hundred years ago. Wow. And I'm, and I'm, my intention is to turn it into a short-term rental. So maybe I should start out marketing it when I finish the rehab your way, instead of relying on one of the, um, you know, platforms out there, third-party agencies. So let's dive into it. What in the world is direct booking for a short-term rental? And when, when that was brought up, when, when that, that previous, um, you know, short-term renter brought, so they wanted to direct book. What did you do next? How did you start diving into, as you say, building your own brand? Yeah, well, you know, and just going back what you're saying about um, you wanting to get into the short-term rentals and whatnot, and maybe we can talk about that as well as sort of the difference between having an investment and having a business um, and how if you want to get involved more with the bookings and whatnot. But what happened with me was that um, they, they rang up and they wanted to do this, and I was like, you know, I had drank the Kool-Aid. I was on Airbnb. I was team Airbnb. Uh, this is how I had, um, you know, got bookings for another couple of properties. And, you know, uh, you go off platform. To, to this day, there are people that are so scared to move anything off the Airbnb platform because they instill it in those who are hosts on the platform just to keep everything there so that they have control. And that's what you're giving up when you are using or just real, you can use them, but not rely so heavily on the OTAs before um, the Airbnb and the booking.coms and all these kind of places came out of the woodwork, you know, everything was direct booking. When you wanted to go stay in a hotel, when you wanted to stay in a B&B &B or a short-term rental, a vacation rental, you went to that person, the manager, the owner direct. The OTAs came in, the internet exploded, and um, bookings went crazy. And now we're getting to the point where we're just saturated. The online space is saturated. So when I now what a, not to interrupt you, Jim, but what is an OTA? What does OTA okay. stand for? So that stands for an online travel agent like Airbnb, Booking.com, Expedia. Okay. Okay. Verbo. You know those type of platforms that are bringing you bookings. Okay. So it was up to me to, like you said, you know, I could have just said, forget it. This isn't working. Let's just sell the place and move on. But no, I wanted to, to make this business work. I wanted to pay the mortgage. I really wanted guests to come to our little place in Austria 
and enjoy their vacation and make those memories with their families that we had been able to do too, because it was just such a magical place. So building my brand, I had to go back into my marketing um, uh, uh, education that I had and what I had done with other clients and do it for myself. And it is marketing speak, building your brand. But the idea is that instead of people saying, I stayed in an Airbnb, I wanted them to say that I stayed at Jen Chalet or whatever mm. my, you know, my name was. And that's about building the brand. I wanted everything inside to be very Austrian, you know, the furnishings and everything. And I had a logo, you know, we think about brands as logos and whatnot, but it goes more than that. It's everything that the guest experience would be with our brand. Now, getting a little ahead of myself, but there are two things that you really need to do. If, if this is more of an, if more than just an investment, if it's an investment, fine, hire a property manager, hire a company to take care of your bookings and your cleanings, the turnovers, all of those kind of things, hire a property manager. Okay. There'll be somebody in your area. Um, talk to a few people, find out the person that you click with and that's great because you will, you know, you will make more money having a short term rental than a long term rental. If you have a, a tenant in, it's just the way it works, but you'll have more expenses as well. On the flip side, you might say, oh, I really like this idea. I want to be my own property manager and I want to get my own bookings and not rely so heavily on the likes of Airbnb. Um, you need a website you need a website, you need a place for people to book online. That's non-negotiable. Having this website where people can book, um, it just, you know, we are living in the age of Airbnb. We have to make it as easy for guests to book with us than they do with all of the other um, marketing platforms. The second thing you need after that, um, that website is the marketing piece, which you have to tell people. I, I don't know, Jay, do you remember that movie? I think it was in the 80s, um, Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner. Absolutely, Koster. Yeah. Yes, yes. If you build it, they will come. Right. That doesn't happen in marketing. No, you know? it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I, so, you, can, you, can, you can have the, the best website in the world, but if nobody's finding it, there you go. Well, that's it. That's it. So the marketing piece is actually even more important once you've got that website is driving people to that website to book and telling everyone that's what marketing is. You're just telling everyone to come and go on your website and book and come and have that amazing experience of where your, your property is in your local area. So the website and driving traffic. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you a question that would probably take you three days to answer at your summit. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and, and uh, just give us as much as you can in the time that we've got. How do you drive the traffic to your website? Oh my goodness. That is a big <laughs> question, isn't it? Well, well, that's like somebody asking me, how do I find motivated sellers that are not listed in the multiple listing service? Yeah. That's, that's a, that's yeah. at least a full day conversation, but at yeah. least, we, we can at least get it started. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, we can. And the, the most simplistic answer is to tell people, tell everybody, tell your family, tell your friends, tell everybody you meet, you know, we live in an online world, but have business cards printed out. Every person you meet, you're at the, a restaurant, you're talking to your server. Hey, have you ever thought about having a holiday or a vacation here? Here's my card, you know, when you're ready to book online, offline methods, you know, all is valid, but it's, it's telling people. It really is, can be that simple as telling people. We can get into the details of search engine optimization and email um, lists and lead magnets and all this kind of marketing um, jargon and things to do, but the basis of it is telling people. So let's, let's drill down on that. So for, for example, this property, my grandparents' home uh, that my mother actually was born in, um, and I'm converting it. So um, I'm all about I'm all about networking and referrals and telling. 
but how do I tell the people that are, that don't live in my area that are coming from, you know, a long ways away, I can't tell them because mm -hmm. they're not here. They're not here in my area. Yes. So what's one or two ways that they find the website? Well, the one, uh, one thing that you really need to do is step into being that local expert. And this is something that the likes of the OTAs, the online uh, travel agents like Airbnb can't touch because they're global. And they can't get into the nuances of being that local uh, expert. And that is some, that's a role that you need to take is to really step into that role and um, become your local area expert and then be promoting that on online. So if we're wanting to grab everyone's attention across the internet, um, it's social media. You know, it's getting those accounts. It's getting your your personal accounts, your profile, your business pages, maybe creating a, a Facebook group for your local area for tourism. Um, this is all about the your guest and who is coming. Um, your ideal guest is what I like to talk about um, and really having a person in your mind of who is the right fit for your property because you want them to um, come back again. You also want um, them to be the perfect fit so that there's no problems and that they'll leave you a great review at the end. So talking about your local area, a great thing to do, and this is a bit more advanced, but a great thing to do is to create something like a lead magnet mm -hmm. where it's like a create a PDF guide of your local area. Say, OK, my fa five favorite things to do in my area. And people will exchange their email address for this PDF, this guide, this digital download. So then you are telling everybody online, you're going into Facebook groups, you are um, using SEO and other tactics to tell people about it. Then people start downloading it, you get their email address, and you can start sending them targeted emails, telling them how amazing your area is, and trying to get them to want to come and stay with you when they travel to your area. I love it. I love it. So now we're talking a marketing funnel is what yeah, we're talking. <laughs> that's <But> exactly you... <laughs> it. That's exactly it. You're building your it. own sort of marketing funnel. And you're, and you're beginning your marketing funnel by giving value, right? Mm. By serving, by serving <laughs> and continuing to serve them and give the information, you know, in your area. So that was going to be my next question, which you just answered. And that is how important is social media uh, to the success of a uh, short-term rental business and not just investment. And mm -hmm. it sounds like it's very, very important. It can be. Yes. You know, uh, it's, it's that top of funnel, the, exactly what you're talking about. It's getting all the people interested in and in leaning into that local area because people, you know, this might be a hard truth for some people, but there's very few places where people want to stay at that exact property for whatever reason it is. <clears throat> excuse me, it's the idea that they want to come to that area. Mm -hmm. And then what property fits best. And when you're searching on booking.com, you know, Verbo, Airbnb, it's just amenity after amenity. And what has, you know, you're, you're basically going, okay, I've got, need so many bedrooms, you know, I, I'm bringing my dog, you know, whatever it is. Um, but there's no emotional connection. Mm -hmm. And with your marketing and your local area, you're wanting to go out and reach people and say, this is why you want to come. You know, we've got the best wineries or we've got, you know, the best museums or whatever it is. And finding that right person that will want to come and then staying with you is secondary. Exactly. Putting them first, putting them mm -hmm. first. Well, my guess is, uh, Jen, you have educated and coached quite a few people over a period of time on how to do the marketing and direct booking like you do yourself. So in, in coaching and working with people to use this method of getting their short-term rentals um, occupied, mm -hmm. a couple of questions. What are the common mistakes <laughs> that you have experienced and heard people that are new or maybe seasoned as well, but uh, particularly the new people that are just getting into short-term rentals. What are some of those common mistakes that you have observed that the newbies make getting into this? 
Well, one of them is just what I was saying about field of dreams. If you build it, they will come, you know, but in a different sense, just putting it up on Airbnb or putting your listing out there and just thinking that the bookings are just going to fall in your lap. You know, there's a lot of people out there that want you to believe that. Um, and it's not true. And if this is not up for you, you know, a property manager are, is there as a business to take this on. OK, you don't have you can might think I really like the idea of the short term rentals, the direct bookings. This sounds really great thinking of the return you can make, but you don't want to take it on yourself. There are property managers out there that can can do all of this for you. But yeah, thinking that bookings are just going to drop into your lap. Another one in your marketing is um, thinking that um, selling, you know, and discounting to the guests. So come, I'll give you 10% off, you know, or come, it's only $1.99 or whatever it is, you know, book now, book now, book now. It is good to tell people that, yes, they should be booking now and they should be booking direct. That's how we want to get our guests in. Um, but um, it's leaning into what they can do there and the experience they can have. And that will help them make that emotional connection. So that is a mistake I see a lot of the time is people just saying book, 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 sell, sell, sell. And it doesn't really work. You know, think about when you're online, if you keep seeing somebody trying to sell to you, what is your reaction, Jay? Um, I resist and push away because when, yeah. I mean, nobody, no, nobody likes to feel like they're being pressured or feel like they're being quote unquote sold. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that's it. That's it. But if that same person was saying to you, you know, this is a great area, you and your family are going to love it. Or when you're here on at, on business, you know, we've got fast Wi-Fi and um, a, an office for you to use or whatever it is, you know, then you'd be like, oh, hey, that sounds a bit interesting, you know, and then you go towards that that booking. Right. Um, as far as getting the property ready. What are some uh, tips and suggestions you could give to someone new that's like getting their first property ready to go and they're going to be furnishing it? Again, I know this is a big question with a long list, with a long <laughs> check, with a long checklist, but um, what are some two or three for sure to do's as far as getting the property ready? Two or three for sure to do's and maybe two or three for sure don't do. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see what I can come up with. Um, one big no, no. And I see this, I see this in like, um, Facebook groups where someone says, Oh, I've had a guest and they've broken this picture, this bowl, this antique, this heirloom. It's like, what, why do you have those in your property? You're going to have all sorts of people in there and hopefully they'll take care of your place. But if there's something that you cannot replace or has sentimental value, get it out of your house, get it out of your property. Okay. If there's pictures on the wall um, of you and your family, take them down. I don't want to feel, and the guests don't want to feel like they're in someone else's home. They want to feel like they're in their own home for their stay. So that's a, those are a couple of big ones, you know, depersonalize, I guess is, is a way of saying it and get rid of those things that you cannot replace. Another thing, one thing to do is go and stay there yourself as a guest and mm. maybe have somebody else come and test drive it in another weekend or something like that. And try to think of it. Your, if you're brand new, you don't know where, you know, the uh, washing up liquid or the, you know, like the, um, the, the hand cream is or where the rest of the toilet paper is. You don't know where it is. So try to live like a guest so you can see what is needed and don't skimp. Don't skimp. Don't go and buy bargain basement sheets and, you know, the crappiest toilet paper, these kind of things. Think about your guests when they're there and what kind of experience you want them to have. We want to think of them at their lifetime value rather than they're just coming for one or two nights or even a week. We want them to come back and, and again, and we want them to give good reviews and tell their friends because that is part of our marketing as well is telling others to come and stay. So it's looking at the guest 
experience and what they want and what they will need while they're there so that they can spend the time instead of going to the local store to stock up on toilet paper when they've only been there 20 minutes, um, they can spend the time with their family, friends, and enjoying your property in the area. I love it. That is great advice. For our listeners that don't have a short-term rental yet, but they've been thinking about it, but they didn't really you know, know where to start, uh, on average, and I know the answer to this is going to vary all over the board, but if you could give some kind of, uh, some kind of average, you mentioned earlier in the show about how always, uh, your, your short-term rental, if it's marketed correctly and you've got it, you know, set up correctly, it's always going to bring in more money than a, a straight rental on mm -hmm. average. What would you say a short-term rental, how much better it would perform given everything's in place that should be in place over and beyond a uh, straight rental? Well, when we think about it, um, so say someone's staying as a, as a long-term tenant, say they're paying a thousand dollars a month to stay in your property. But if you have short-term rentals, maybe you are charging 150, $200 a night. So quickly, you can add up the difference there in the amount of money that you're bringing in. However, it's not all gravy. There are expenses. You know, you will have some expenses for marketing, even though I'm a very big proponent of organic marketing. So free, free with a little bit of time and effort. Um, but if you have a, a property manager, they need to be paid and, you know, they need to take care of it. If your bookings are coming through the online travel agents like Airbnb and booking.com, all of those bookings you have to pay commission on. Okay. So, and there's also expenses in what you're providing um, in the, the property insurance and regulations as well as something to look at and safety. You have to make sure that everything's, you know, above board and nobody's going to get hurt. So there are expenses. It's not like, you know, I'm going to make $250 a night, um, net. No, you're not. There are expenses to make, but you can very quickly see that having somebody in as a guest rather than a tenant will make more money in the long run. For sure. Well, I know we have got a lot of listeners here to the show that have considered, um, but haven't started yet. And there's a lot of listeners here that have been relying on the platforms and are interested in the direct booking from the time they learn how to do this, the way you do it, What's a realistic period of time that they could actually have their marketing up and going, their website up, and actually have business coming in and nights being booked? Well, that, yes, that really depends on how much effort they're going to put into it because it is does take some effort. For your situation, Jay, what I would suggest is that you're starting that branding now. If you, before you launch, before you launch and say you're open for booking, start now. Start with people who are wanting to come to your area. Start to create that community around your brand and telling people that what you're going to create so that they are ready for it. So that when you say, okay, we are ready for bookings, you have a lineup out the door that are ready to come and book. And, you know, that can take a few months. But, it, you know, it depends on how much time and effort you want to put into it. Um, in um, After we sold the, the chalet um, I, from Austria, we moved back to England. And I just moved back. I, I realized I used the term washing up liquid a few minutes ago. And I couldn't remember what the North American equivalent is because I've spent 21 years away um, in Europe. But I, we created a brand, a new vacation rental in England. And in that first year, I had 80% direct bookings. Wow. And it was all because what I used from running the chalet and learning that business. Um, and I started again. I started as we were creating, while we were renovating. Um, I was building that interest. I was putting photographs of what was happening and getting people interested in the area. So it's really great now. If you've already got the property and you're already doing it and that, you know, that ship has sailed, if you will, and you're ready to, but you're like, okay, I've been just uh, relying too much on the OTAs. 
then go out and get that website and start with the marketing and start seeing the shift from the dependency on the OTAs towards you. And a really good rule of thumb is to look at, you know, you still want some sort of presence on Airbnb, booking.com or whatever platforms you want, because if something happened to you, you want still a few bookings to come through. Um, so, you know, you're wanting to look at, you know, maybe a 70-30 split, 60-40, you know, look at what you feel comfortable with. But it does take more effort, um, but also there's more profit in those in those bookings that come direct. Wonderful. Jen, I know we have listeners that want to learn how to do this direct booking um, strategy like you do. So how can people learn how to do what you do? Well, I have a annual online summit. So I help people all over the world um, with their direct bookings. And there's the website there, directbookingsuccesssummit.com. You can sign up to the wait list for the next one that it happens in October um, of each year. And you, the best part of it, you can be in your pajamas. You can come and it's free. It's free and you can be in your pajamas. Um, you can go to my website, directbookingsuccess.com, and you can have links there to my podcast and the other trainings that I that I regularly create for people. And just get in touch. Come and say hi. I love it. So that's directbookingsuccess.com <clears throat> to get in contact directly with you there and learn about the podcast, how to follow you there. Jen, thank you so much for joining me. What a wonderful conversation this has been about short-term rentals and being in control of your own booking. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks so much, Jay. And keep me up to date with your own property. I want to see how you do and what you do end up doing with it. It's very exciting. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, uh, my friend. Another amazing episode here on Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority. And we really appreciate you liking and subscribing. If you happen to be uh, listening on any of the podcast platforms, be sure and follow me so you don't miss out. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell so we can continue to notify you of our amazing guests coming up and so you don't miss out. I'm looking forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Conner. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash money guide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jayconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time.